welcome back. It's me, Ben Bush, and these are my rhinoceros tutorials. And today is a special day because it is an angry day. And angry day means I got long hair and I don't care. With that in mind, I want to show you two commands that I've really got into the last year. The first one is called flow along surface or flow along curve. And the second one is called cage edit. I'm going to see if we can zoom through these for the interest of time. Uh, the execution of them is simple. It's just you can add a lot of variations to how you approach them. Now, I'm going to start with the flow along curve command first. I did all this work earlier, so I wouldn't have to do it later. So let me hide some of these elements. And then I'll show you how I got there. All right, so I have one shape. That's irrelevant. I got this one spiraling pentagon, yeah? So I got that very simply from, like, I drew a pentagon. Where are you? Here we go. Give me five sides, please. Sweet. Side view. And that is sufficient. I'm going to extrude it and then use a transform menu to rotate it around. Well, it's not rotate necessarily. It's twist. There. And then I'm going to rotate. Yes, twist, of course. What's difficult is I want to rotate down the center axis of this. That'd make my life a lot easier. I messed up. Redo from center on through. And we'll rotate this about, you know, <laughs> give or take 72 degrees for those who want to know. All right, so this is how I got my spiraled shape. Pretty simple, nothing really complex going on just yet. Flow along curve works like a very simple math equation. Let's see if I can write this out. And I'm not going to brag as if I'm the best at math, but it works like this. What is ghetto broke? We can't use that. Give me something simple. <laughs> Fair enough. OK. It works like this. A times B equals C times D. My inputs are proportional to my outputs. So I'm going to show you what that means just in a second. This is what my, my input is. It's along one curve. It's extruded along one axis, if you will. Let me see if this allows me to use a center. It does. Fantastic. I'm going to bring it a little bit farther and then take it back and make sure I don't have any end selected because I would like this to stay in the center. OK. So let's get a little ghosted view. You can see I have a line through the center of this twisted, extruded pentagon. That's a lot of diction for me to do. Now what fascinates me is I can take this shape and make something crazy complicated out of it. And it looks like I spent a lot of time creating it, but in fact I did not. So for example, I'm going to make a torus out of the slab. <coughs> Circle. And so this is where the equation I just showed you comes into play. The shape is my A. The curve is my B. The shape it's fixing to make is my C. And my other curve is my D. It's in the transform menu. Not cage edit. We're almost there. But flow along curve. I want to flow this object using this base curve along this curve and this is the exact same width, so our length equals there. That's pretty neat, but it's not exactly what I was going for. Let's try it again. <laughs> Base curve, and I'd like to stretch it this time along <laughs> my tangent curve. So there we go. Now, if you just told me to make this out of the starting blocks, make one surface that's interconnected and spirals around itself in a torus configuration, I'd been like, no. But, you know, I've, I've been around rhinoceros before, so this isn't that complicated. If I wanted to print this guy, I have these two walls. I'd have to come in here, remove the walls in between, and then patch that up or do blend surface. But very simple equation. Gives you something pretty stinking neat. Let me introduce you to, I don't need this, another command, the full along surface. And I need a plane. Let's get a normal plane instead of something that's kind of janky. Here, and I'm going to use another command. There's many ways to do many things. Planar surf takes 
a curve and makes it a surface. Let me get rid of my curve. Sweet, now it's crisp. And let's project it onto a paraboloid. A paraboloid. Paraboloid. Yeah, it just sounds so right. Anchorman, anybody? Paraboloid, fine. Just, am, I, am I by myself? All right, nobody's really laughing. And we'll drop a sphere in this guy. One there. All right, so it's the same basic idea of what we just did. We have our A, our B, our C, and it's gonna give me the D. Transform, flow along surface here. Sorry, objects that I wanna flow. These are the objects. Here's the surface that I'm coming from, the one I want it to adjust that geometry to, and there we go. <coughs> That's pretty weird. And the reason why it gave me that funky shape is because it's hanging off the edge. So just for aesthetic integrity, we'll try this again. These guys, thank you. Base, target, there we go. Pretty fun stuff. And it's not like I really did a lot of inputs or anything. It's just, it's a command that lets you get really complicated really fast and make some shapes that otherwise would take a long time to make. So let us take this to a next level. You saw the, the spiral that I brought in. Let me save my ducks till later. Eyeball. All right, so that's where I want to be. And do I need this anymore? No. OK, so I want to do shaded this guy. But I don't want any of these edges to touch. So I made this fun little shape, and then I used curve boolean to pull this shape. Make sense, anybody? Yeah, nothing too crazy. And then I extruded. I've done one where I have circles that intersect one another, and it got really fun and complicated, but our 3D printer wasn't uh, updated enough to, to really print a good job. It has like too much support material around it. So what I want to do is achieve this result. So I have these guys are all roted, ro roted, nice, rotated at 72 degrees, and they're pretty close to being what I guess we could call interlocked with one another, or at least they're kind of infringing upon each other's real estate. So I'm going to take this, and I don't want to rotate. I want to twist. I'm getting those mixed up a bit today. So we'll start from roughly the center. Oh, I want to start from the origin. No problem. We can start this from the origin. Here you are. So relatively the center, go along the body, and then we're going to rotate. Sorry, twist 72%. Yes, this is the complexity that I'm talking about. So once again, one of those things that would be pretty complicated to make, but I figured out a process of going about this. That's pretty interesting, yeah? Let's take it one step further. I'm going to take this and make a torus out of it. So what I'm wanting to do, I want to cut off the end so I have a, a flat starting point and a flat ending point. Making sure I'm going through that point, very good. And I really should split because even if I, if I take a solid and do flow along the surface and I put the ends back to one another, I'm going to go in there and fix the ends because I'll be, I want it to be one watertight surface. And if I leave ends and it's not watertight, it's not quite done. So will you split? I want to split all these guys with my end caps. 15 pieces, that sounds about right. Now I should be able to get rid of that. This little piece. Nope. Not important. Oh, come back now. Give me back to home. Thank you. 
And so now we're gonna do the same thing I did with the extruded twisted pentagon. I need to lay a curve down the middle. And this is easier for me to come back in because I want this to be perfectly straight. If I turn off all my O snaps, and it's easier to get that into the beginning and finish of my shape. All right, curve is done. Let us choose a circle. That should work. So it's fixing to get relatively basic geometry and make it complex. So let's, let's see if it happens without shutting down the computer. Base curve, no. Objects, these are the objects I'd like to flow. This is the base curve, tangent curve. I forgot to use stretch, but interesting. Try it again. Stretch please, yes. There we go. I need to come in here, I might need to change the degrees that I rotate. But it's pretty fun looking. So if you're into making jewelry or fun geometric shapes, definitely a fun uh, command to play around with. The second one is if you get into a boo-boo. There's no parent or history tree that I'm aware of that Ron has produced. And that's why I like and don't like the program. But you do get into situations where I'm kind of done. I'm finished the project about as much as I want to. And now I'm in trouble because I need to go back and make a tweak. But let's take this duck, for instance. This is simple. I'm going to go ahead and join all my loose surfaces and then Boolean union and everything else. So we have one surface out of this. Yeah? If you want to pull out the ducktail or something similar, we can't. And we know that because this is now a poly surface it's made of many surfaces. We could change it at this point, but let's say this is days ago and we need to make a small tweak on here. We're in trouble. We can either take it apart and rebuild, which honestly from this it's not that bad, but something more complicated, we'd be in trouble. So let me show you how to make a small tweak or a big tweak on a poly surface. The command is called cage edit. It does this. It takes a cage and puts it around it and allows you to edit it. Smart people. Don't do create cage because when you go through the cage edit menu, it creates a cage for you. Always use bounding box and then I just hit enter for the rest of the stuff. You have more control points if you'd like them. But typically this gives me what I'm looking for. It puts a bounding box around my object. So if I do want to give some modifications, I can, even though it is a poly surface. And if you remember from other talks about control points, they are also scalable. One more, thank you. 1D. And as soon as I move this box, I lose this round of editing. So you want to get it pretty close to where you want it to be before you finish, but I think it looks fun. I delete my box. Now I have a, a duck that I'm happy with and I didn't have to start all over at the beginning. So of course that works for the duck. It also works for our geometric shapes we made just a bit ago. I was trying to cage edit and then we'll pull, we'll put a, a bulge or a swell in the middle. Let's see how that works, cage edit. Bounding box, yes, yes, yes. And I'm gonna take these into your point and I want to scale in all three dimensions. This is gonna be a little weird because they're gonna push them out that direction. So if I don't wanna put them out that direction, I can always delete 
move everything to my origin and that should ease some of those scaling woes that I am fixing to encounter. Come on, let's work together here. Very good. All right, all these interior ones, scale 3D. There we go. I want to increase the drama. I'm going to scale these one dimensionally in a linear fashion and then crunch them down a little bit. Let's take this off. So I mean, y'all seen that it can get really complicated really fast, but if you're wanting to play around with form and shape and do things that otherwise would take a, a long time to model, it's a good source of inspiration and, you know, we're in the design major. So if you're not playing, you're not really having fun. So I would encourage y'all to play with these commands, do something fun, then try to find somebody with a 3D printer or a mill and have some crazy stuff and some people are gonna ask, how'd you make that? And you go, eh, it's gonna flow along surface, I flow along curves. You wouldn't understand. That's about all I got. <laughs>